Hey, I'm JD. Welcome to my channel and thank you for subscribing and thank you for supporting my channel over all of these years. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be unbasketing this particular watch here. And this is a very old Waltham movement. And I want to just show you the complexity of this thing. So this is what I'm looking at here. I've got to, I'm going to grab a toothpick here. What I'm going to do first in this video, just I'm just going to reassemble all of this. I may not video the reassembly of this because I really need to concentrate to do that. And I'm telling you, this keyless mechanism here is a real pain in the butt to disassemble and to reassemble, mainly to reassemble. The main part is because of this right under here, there's a spring or a clip or spring that holds this in place. And then you've got to be able to you know, you've got to be able to put that back together successfully and not completely screw it up. There's a couple more pictures of this. I can't remember whether I took an open. And on the other side, there's this, which is also part of the mechanism, but it's on the reverse side of this. So it takes quite a while to get this back together again. And I have another friend that uh, does work on pocket watches. And here, here's what it looks like here. And there's actually one of the little gears is missing here, but that's how that clip goes in. And I have another friend that does work on watches and he actually doesn't disassemble them. And then there's another gear on the other side where that plate goes. And oh my God, the, fin the fun continues. So what I'm going to do is reassemble that. Um, I, may, I may videotape it, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of concentration to do this. So we'll see what I can do. And I know the parts are in the basket. So I've got to find these parts in the basket and then get them reassembled so i've done one other watch like this before a while ago and it was a b watch so i'm just telling you that right now so and this is uh the watch from a lady named let me see if i can figure out what her name is i think it's donna let me think i think it's donna's watch just let me see I know I had another watch I was looking at uh, today and I was thinking, who owns this thing? And then I realized it was uh, my friend Billy's watch. So it's, uh, I found the owner and it was Billy. So it was a little bit, made me a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, this is Donna's watch. This is the one that, uh, that's all first names, first name basis, but this is Donna's watch. So I'm going to have to dump Donna's watch parts find those parts and then reassemble this movement here and oil it appropriately this is what i call hell hell it's hell <laughs> i'll be back now none of these parts are from the um what i just showed you so none of these parts are from there so i don't have to worry about these parts and then i believe i basketitize them down here we have the mainspring and the main plates and some fun later on with this but nothing is as fun as reassembling what i just told you this is the funnest of the fun and it, i've got to find these parts too now my biggest problem is i've been off for a little while and i've got family coming so it's making it difficult to complete my watch repair i've told people that ahead of time i said to them you know i can't I gotta make choices here and I gotta make sure they're the right choices. So so here we go. There's a basket. There's one basket of fun right there. So that's part of it. I know that's part of it. So I'll dump that. Dump a roux. And then when you dump the parts, you just look inside the basket to make sure there's nothing left from what you dumped. And it looks like there's a part right here. I need to change switch glasses too, because I don't want to lose anything. You want to dump the parts, check the cage, make sure there's nothing left, put it back, and then get the next cage and have a look and see if there's dumpable parts there. I gotta get my glasses on though, so I can't do this work with normal reading glasses. I gotta use these, and I've made a couple videos on these, so buy yourself a good set of glasses. The lower part is, I believe, well, the lower part's the distance from my eyes to the table so I can work on pocket watches. The upper part is the distance from my eyes to the computer screen. And this is an airy loop and these cost around about 120 to 150 bucks. And they grab onto your glasses and flip down and they're the most 
I think they're the best loop you can buy for watchmaking. So you gotta get yourself an airy loop. This is how they attach to the glasses. And you mold those on so they, uh, so you don't have to worry about them uh, falling off. So I need to put these on to do my job properly. I don't want to screw anything up because I can't afford to screw anything up. Okay, in here I threw the escapement. There you go. So we're not going to touch that. I'll leave the escapement where it is. And it looks like it's just stuck there inside the screen. That's what happens when you clean these things. <laughs> Don't need to move it right now though, so we'll let's leave it here. Put it back in here. And then grab the next one and see if this is it. Because I need more parts, man. I need more parts. And I'll likely just reassemble this and throw it back together quickly. So no, that's the cannon pinion, the hour wheel, all kinds of other fun stuff. It's the bridge for the pallet fork. So it's not that. Put that back. And there's, I know it's, I know the levers are in there, so it's got to be here. This is where it has to be. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so that's that there. And look inside the basket for any screws that would have clinged on. The cling-on screws. And just like that. So that's that. I'll put this back here. And I know I've got to get that uh, escapement out of there after. But the next thing I need is the plate, so I'll take the spring out here. Very carefully remove the spring. That's nicely cleaned up. I like this spring, by the way, because it's got a notch here. So it's, see if you look at that spring there. It's got a notch on it, and I don't have to deal with that T-brace. So that's the uh, main spring. And there's one, that's the cap part, I guess, if you call this the gear and, and uh, the arbor part. Right, and there's an arbor. The arbor is here somewhere too. I don't think it's in here. I think it's in one of the other baskets or something. Oh, I might have thrown it in there. Yeah, there's the arbor right there. If I look down here, I can see the arbor right here. So there's the arbor. So I'll throw. The, I'll put that back in after. But what I really just want is the main plate here. So I just want to grab that main plate. I'm gonna have to get my little finger cuts on. So I've been because you guys gave me crap there a while back and said JD stop using your fingers put some cots on well I started using finger cots and then I did a little research on the finger cots and like I said before I was looking at videos of people repairing Hamilton watches in the factory from days ago a long time ago none of them had finger cots on so please give me some comments I'd love to hear back from you um, on the amazing finger cot issue it's an issue that just is amazing. So I'm going to make this as a part one. I may just do more talking and not do the complete assembly online here because I do need to concentrate. I also need to get my, my, um, another, I need to get another, um, number 58 movement holder because I've got the other number 58 movement holder is busy with a different watch. So, so I'm looking at this, stem configuration here and I know I've got to put this back together again and some of it goes together goes here like this and then other parts of it doesn't doesn't so this this goes over here like that and I know this little tiny screw with this gear here the gear goes down first and then the plate goes down and I just have to check and see if there's beveling on the on this. Look at the size of this thing, right? That is small. So I just check the beveling on either side to make sure I don't have an issue there. And I know, kind of know where that needs to go. And then this here is also part of it. And that goes down inside. And the stem actually goes inside of this. That's how that works. Um, and then this these two little cams here and this screw is part of this mechanism here that goes together all this stuff goes together so i gotta do i gotta figure this stuff out but i'm gonna right now i'm gonna go get myself uh i'm gonna get myself a number 58 movement holder here i've got my myers number 58 movement holder sir 
<laughs> there we go. Now I'll bet you're wondering why I joke around so much. Well, I've been doing it since I was a kid, so too bad. So anyway, so here's the Myers number 58 moving holders there. And I got my famous glasses I keep talking about. And the good thing about this movement holder is as you remove these little pieces here, you can size it to the right watch, but this is perfect for, for pocket watches. And it comes with all different sizes in case you've just watched my videos for the first time. You'll see that this very nice little movement holder here comes in all with all these different sizes. Your third hand, it says, your third hand. Or in French, it would be your third hand. My third hand. There we go. And I made like took a little business card and made a wall for it because I think it was missing the wall. And the great thing, and I'm going to touch the edges here without the mitts on, so, or am I? Oh, I'm feeling really guilty these days. Roll these things on. Roll them on so I don't get trouble from the other watchmakers. Oh, wait a second, that one goes on my thumb. All right, so. I've got to figure out exactly how to reassemble this thing. So the good thing about this movement holder is that you can press the button right here and move it out to size it properly. And I want all of my little movement parts to be on this side here. So I'm going to put this down nicely like that. And I can press the button back in and just squish that in just a bit. And then this is sprung. Uh, how do I explain this? If you look at this and I push on it, you'll see how it springs. It's spring-loaded, which is really makes it handy as hell to uh, to do that. So, but the first thing I got to do, I got to do a lot of work on on this side and the other side, and I've got to get the the photos because I know that these screws and plates fall in there. I know that this jobby doohickey here. It goes in like this, but I got to make sure that it, it's and and, the, and then when I after I put that in here, I need to flip that around, and I need to reassemble the gear, and the screw in this plate here. So, but I got to make sure I don't reassemble things that that I can't get back in. Like I know that the stem has to go in like this, but if I put this together first and tighten it up I might not be able to get the stem in so I have to look at the pictures I made and make sure I get the order right because it's a bit tricky this this uh, reassembly so the first thing I'm going to do is just I'm just going to put a little piece of Rodico down here to keep this in place um, just keep it down with the Rodico I know this is a real pain this particular uh, movement and putting this together it's not easy and as you can see then I've got this wheel here that's got to go in and it goes on top now I got to look at this really closely to see like I said before does it bevel on one side and not on the other because if it has a bevel on it I got to make sure the bevel is in the right direction so I just look at that with my glasses here and I don't think I see a bevel in here at all which is good Yeah, there's no bevel. I might have marked it if there was a bevel, but I don't think there is one. Now, the other thing I see is it's a little dirtier on one side than the other, so I suspect the dirtier side would probably face upwards. So I'm going to put this in like this, like that. And then <clears throat> what I'm going to do, um, I don't think I need to put any oil in there. I'm not quite sure. I don't think I do. Yeah, because it's not there's nothing there to oil on there, so we'll leave it like that. Um, and then I need to fit this guy here on top, and I think he goes kind of in this direction. But I'm going to have to check my photos again, so can't remember completely if he goes that way, right? I'm going to just check these photos. See, in the photo, has it kind of cockeyed? It's going sideways. I don't think it goes like that. I don't think it goes sideways. I think that the flat part faces outward, but maybe it does face the... I think maybe it faces where the circle is here. Right? That, that would kind of make sense, right? So, let me just 
I can't use my number 58 moving holder yet. So I gotta kind of move this in and then have a look at it. And I may have to lower my seat in a second. So I think it might go right like that. Lower the seat, Jerry. Yeah, I think it does, and that gives provides a little bit more real estate. Um, well, for the wheel that has to go in here, right? Yeah, because that wheel just tucks in. I don't think there's an issue there at all. And then the screw goes on top of there like this. Like that, and then I have to find the right screwdriver here and screw that in very carefully. Now that's screwed in really nicely. Now that wheel should be able to move inside there while this is screwed in. And it does. So I just check, I just check the edge. As you can see, uh, it's a little hard to see, but I just checked the edge there. I have a light on this camera, so let me just turn the light on here. Yeah, and you can see right on the edge, you can see the gear, and I just touch that gear to make sure it still moves and there's no problem there. But I'm not tightening that down yet until we get the rest of it all together. So, so we're gonna flip that around here uh, because I need to now work on this side of the, uh, the equation. And I can leave it like this, there's no no parts that are going to stick out through yet so i can leave it on the mat like this and not have to put it in my number 58 movement holder so but i do have to i do need to look at the photos again to see what goes where um and as i can see the lineup of stuff here uh, the first thing to go on um, this goes on here so i got the uh, this wheel and I'm not going to be able to remember the names of all these wheels right now. I'm just focusing way too much. But this wheel, the wheel wheel, that goes on there. I think I need to loosen stuff up to get it in, though. That's the challenging part. So I think that goes on like that. And, and I think that the other, this wheel here also goes in, but it may go in. I think it needs to go in before this wheel goes in. Yeah, I think so, because there's a little stop there, and I think that stop stops it. And it does go in in that direction. So, let me just point down a bit more so you can see what kind of nonsense I'm working on. Yeah, so this, 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 so I have a friend that does watchmaking, and he told me, basically, he never takes these things apart. He said, I don't take them apart because I've I worried him for going to forget how to put them back together again. So, and see that doesn't fit there. That won't fit through. So that actually, you look at the stem. Yeah, that goes in the square part. So that goes down this way, and it's not wanting to let go. Yeah, this goes on this side over here. And that would be, I just move it around a little bit there. And then this wheel goes on the other side. On this side. And I'll oil those up after, but I need to get them in place. And, and when you're working on, on any type of miniature stuff like this, like pocket washes and stuff, you just have to be very careful. And you see how these, these gears then mesh right here? And that's the clutch wheel, it's called. So the clutch wheel goes in like that. And then all that kind of drops down. So I'm hoping I can, hoping and praying I can just drop this baby down. But I think from before, my experience before, was that, um, that it, there was a problem putting that in because you kind of had to have it together to put it in. You know what I mean? See, if I look at it like that, and I try to put this in place, I almost have to unscrew that and then put this down and then screw that all back in. So I'm gonna see what I can do here. Because uh, that won't fit in there. It's gotta fit in this little hole right there. And then the whole stem is gonna fit in here, but it's way too tight to do that. So I remember doing this before and what a pain in the butt it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some Rotic over the top of this again on this side 
and see if I can hold this down a bit. Let me just move this up a bit so you can see the nonsense I'm working at. See, I can't get that the end of the stem into that hole because it's now in place, and I can't get this wheel to, to ride down here until that stem moves. I remember doing that before and thinking, God, how the heck do you do this? So I'm just going to rotico the bottom here a little bit and just try to keep that part in place. Then I have to turn it around and I may have to use my other hand here. I apologize, but and I have to undo the screw just a bit. I think I got to loosen it up just a bit enough in order to get that plate in. So this is what I would call poor engineering. <laughs> I'm going to put this in the movement holder just to give it a bit of stability here. Yeah, I need to have a bit of stability to unscrew this. So I unscrewed it a bit, which might give it enough shake to let me push that part in. But still not sure. No, that's not going in yet. I may have to come all the way out, which is a real pain in the butt, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put another piece of Rodico on this thing on this side. That way when I unscrew it, when I unscrew it, I can put it back in and not lose the part, right? It's a lot of work, man. a lot of work. Yeah, that tucks in down low. Yeah, so let me just turn it around again. And I'm going to unscrew this a bit more. And I'm going to cause myself all kinds of problems. I know it. I know this thing's going to come out on me and I'm going to go, I'm going to swear in three different languages. There, it's out, and guess what? I'm going to do Rodico on this side too, and that, to keep this down now, because it's now loose. But if I Rodico it, maybe I can keep it down enough to stay in place while I twist the other one. Look at this and you know, pluck the radical off because I think I may just have to undo the whole damn thing and do it over again. Let me get that stem and it wants to go in, folks. It wants to go in. This gear just needs to slide down. That's all it needs to do, and we're good. And it's almost there. It's in the semi-sliding down position. There we go. Okay, that's down now. And that is in this side. So it's stabilized. Now I'm going to put the Rodico back. I need to work closer to the camera here. I really apologize. I get all carried away here. And I moved to the wrong side of the camera, so I'm going to put the radical back here so this doesn't go anywhere. You can see how much of a pain in the butt this is, Zoe. And people why ask why it costs so much to repair a watch, because you're working with micro parts. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and when it doesn't you got to start all over again. And there we go. So that's in the slot there, which is nice. Now if I lift that up, can I get to the screw? Okay. Make sure it's tight, but not too tight. And then turn that around. I can take that off, I think. Like this. I can take this off, I think. Yeah. 
And there we go. Let me see if that is that right. Is that going to work? Yep, that turns and doesn't rub anywhere. And that's on the inside, that's on the other side. That would catch the uh, catch these gears for winding. That's pretty good right there. So that's, uh, let me see if I can get a little bit of a close up of how that thing works before I do some more assembly. I'm gonna make this video just the this particular stuff here, okay, so. So I got this here, this here, this here. This went, this pipe goes through now, right? Which is what I wanted out of this, and um, and so that's that's perfect there. And this would mesh with this here. So crown wheel and ratchet wheel, I think, or ratchet wheel anyway. The crown wheel is the one that's on top of. Uh, uh, I got to get my book out again. <laughs> I think I'll show you the book later, but so now what I need to do is put a little oil on this. So, so the oil in, I'm going to use for this is, and, I'm, and I've you watch my videos and I number or name the oils, but I've got different types of oils. Let me just move this over by, like put this into my Myers number 15 movement holder. Be a good boy here. There we go. And put that down there and then tighten that up a bit. And the, the good thing about this movement holder, as I said before, is that you put pressure on the sides here, it doesn't fall off. There's these little tiny, these little tiny winglets or V's or whatever on the edge here. And they actually help keep that watch from flinging up because the bottom edge of the movement clips into here. So it works really well. And when you tighten it, as I said, I can press this here. So I'm tightening against a spring, so it's not going to cause an issue. So the so the oil I use for that because it's um, it's motion works. It's called with all the stems and everything else. So or the works maybe. Um, and I'm going I'm to show you the book a book on this in a few seconds. But but the oil I use for that. Just let me get that oil for a second just to show you. I probably will use a. Yeah, I'll probably use an HP. Yeah, I got a choice here. Yeah, I think I'll use I think I'll use the 9104. So that's the 9104, 9104, expiry 2020. I think I'm good. <laughs> so then this oil looks like it's the red oil. I keep saying it's the red oil, but it looks like that. So it's fairly thick. If you can see it flowing there. Kind of a little bit like molasses, um, so it's uh, very good. It's synthetic oil, so it's going to last a lot longer than the date they put in there. So don't you have to buy the two hundred dollar bottle bottle of oil every time you repair a watch? But uh, maybe in five years I'll replace my oils. But that oil is pretty good, and it's all synthetic oil. So I know that I've got some moving parts in here, so I want to make sure I oil the moving parts. I also want to stay away from the stuff I have down here. Because I've got little pieces over here that I want to get out of the way. Because um, there is that chance while I'm doing this and moving stuff around that I touch something and something else moves. So, so, and i got to put this stuff together in a second. But first, is, first things first, let's oil this puppy dog. So I grab myself an oiler. And this is a, my red oiler for the red oil. Hey, go figure. And I'll jam that oiler into the... Uh, pithwood I have here. Let me just zoom out a bit here. So I've got this very nice Bergeron oiler. Let's say uh, this is a 3180 from Bergeron and these are all metal and they're heavy as hell. So in the oil, again getting oil out of the oiler, if you pull, if you go in and you come out fast it takes a lot of oil. If you go in and you come out slow it takes a very little bit of oil. I want to take uh, more oil this time and not a, not a little bit of oil. So. I could have used the yellow stuff on this, right? Because it's a thicker oil and it's more friction. So, should I do that? Let me think here. Should I do that? Yeah. Let's let's be true to form here. You, uh, this is a even thicker oil, so it won't go places. And I'll get the name of that in there for a second. A second for you. So I want an oil right here. All right, and that's where the cam kind of rides in there. And I usually put 
some oil on the shaft here as it spins around. And then that'll spread when I spin the shaft. That's going to spread to the top and bottom part, just like this oil here will spread to the top and bottom part. And then, right on the inside of this, right here, is another perfect place for oil. God, if you're looking for perfect places for oil, and the cap of this also needs oil because there's a cam that kind of touches that. And that's probably all you need for that. Um, you, you can draw or put a little bit of this on the gears as well, which might help them a bit. Um, and you just need to put it on a few of them and that'll, that'll pass itself around. And, and yeah, a little bit reluctant, but I can put a little tiny bit of here on the, uh, on these teeth here, just to pass that along to the uh, to the inside where that wheel is on the inside. So that'll that's all it needs. I wouldn't bother oiling uh, the, uh, the 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 clutch over here. I wouldn't bother oiling that. So there we go. So that's the oil. And what is that oil you ask? It's the yellow oil. Come on, guys, the yellow oil. It's D5 Microgliss. I know all my dates are way off, a eh? 2017 expiry. You buy this thing from Mobius. They expire it in 2017, but it's synthetic oil. It's like it's not going anywhere. It's not turning into anything. So write to me and let me know if you think I'm right or wrong. But I have never had problems before. So this is the next thing I'll put together. And, and <laughs> there's this. And... I took a couple of photos of it and the reason I took a photo of it is to see I know that this arm here is a little longer than this arm here so I want to put it back the same way and I don't think I have a photo of the final put back together but there's enough of it there that I can understand how that might go back together so that is what I'm going to do next and you can see how this pushes down on the plunger and this arm rides through this groove here so I've got to make sure that's set up this way. So let's see if we can do that right now. So if I look at this, at the pieces I have, I've got this piece right here, Jerry, right here. This piece would go right in the slot here. So I'm going to just get a little bit annoyingly close. So when I do this, you can see it, but not hit my head on the damn thing when I'm trying to do it. So, so this goes in like this, I believe. I believe I can fly. Let me look at this again here. Yeah, it's got to go in like this. So there's a screw here that's permanent that you don't touch when you're when you're cleaning the uh, watch. So it's kind of permanent. It's a perma screw. And then this goes in like that. And like that. You see how that that goes in there and that arm will move this back and forth. And I put a little bit of oil in there for friction. And then the other, the clip, as you can see, there's there's the clip. Now one side was longer than the other, so it's the other way around. So let me put this down on the ground here for a second. On my mat, this is the clip here. So this clip, one side goes on over here. I believe it clips in right there. And the other side is clipping onto this part here. And this part, I think, a lot of thinking going on here. Um, yeah, I think this goes in like this. Not absolutely sure. <laughs> I just, I know I'm going to have to stretch this clip out. But I think that goes like this. And then this clip, set this, settle this down a bit here. There we go. And this clip goes on both sides of this thing, right? Now this is a clip that could, NASA would probably have one of these things because they go flying all the time, right? Now you want to hold that clip down um, while you put it in place. Because this, this thing here, if you let that go, that's going to just friggin' take off on you, okay? So I could put a piece of Rotico down to make sure it doesn't fly anywhere. I might do that. 
Um, and I've got to be able to put, after I've put that clip in, I need to put this plate down. And it's surprisingly, there's a little hole in here. And I think what they do is they, they think they let you actually manipulate that clip after this is in place so the things don't fly away. Um, I'm not absolutely sure, but I think that's what the situation is. So, so because if I tried putting this clip in place without putting this in, then we're going to have an, a worse situation. So I know it goes in, so what we're going to do here is just back the clip off, because I know this is where it goes. Back that off. I'm going to put this plate in here, just like this. I think that's the way it goes. I'm not 100% sure, though. Yeah, it looks like that's why it's made that way. So I'm going to put this in like this. Like that. And then I'm going to get the screw here, and I'm going to put this screw in place. So I'm going to take the screw and just... Now I might fail miserably at this the first time because this is stuff that's microsurgery here. Alright, so that's like that. And then I want to get my Bergeron. This thing is very useful by the way. I'm going to give you another hint here. But this is the, I mentioned it a lot, but the uh, 7010 polymade, or polynamide, polynamide, polymade, polymide. I tell you I was an electrical engineer, not a chemical. So polymide, which is polytamide. So Bergeron 7010 polytamide stick. It's a stick. And it's very resistant. It says it's very resistant on it. To what? Being captured? So this stick is handy as hell because you can hold stuff down while you're screwing other stuff in. Like that. And now I've got this in here. I don't want it to be super tight right now because this has got to go on either side of the um, either side of what I showed you two seconds ago. And I got to figure out how to clip that in. I may have to clip it on one side and then pull it open on the other side. So I'm going to have to look at this a little closer because I know that's the way you do it. But I gotta look at it. I'm gonna tip it up and look at it from an angle here. Yeah. I'm not sure which end of this thing I need to put in first. So I know that this this having this way up here would be a little bit easier. But I gotta get this thing clipped on the edge. If you know what I'm saying. That little window might be handy. Now you see that right there? That's where that side has to go. And then this side would push all the way in the other way, right? So, and if I could use my finger to hold this, I might be able to pull it around without it flying off on me. Again, not quite sure. Why do they make movements like this? Who does these things? I think I need to take this big ass thumb thing out of my way here because I need to, I need my actual fi fingernail to help. I can't do it with the. Uh, Trying to grab this here and make sure it doesn't fly off on me. And push it in. I don't even know if that's in. Is that in? I 
What I don't want is for this thing to fly away. So I'm going to just put a little piece of erotica on here while I look and see if it's in place. And maybe if I just rotate that circle around, I can see the other side. What do you think? There. Now it has a hard time flying away. So, so I've got this little hole here. And if I rotate this around, and maybe that's why the hole is there. Because you can look at where the clip is on one side, rotate the hole, and then look at where it is on the other side. Where's the clip on this side? There's the screw. Why does it feel like it needs to be in further? I think it needs to be over here somewhere. Doesn't seem like it's just right at home. I'm gonna have to lift this up and have a sideways look. So as they say, you gotta orient your compass. <laughs> if I look at the way this is right now, and I look at the spring, the spring is good there. It disappears into the uh, the area there. And then it hooks in right here. So I think it's good there as well. It looks like it's it looks like there's a lot of spring here. And there's a little groove in there. So that is probably, that groove is what holds that spring in place. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's good. Just like that. Let me put my erotico away. Because now what I need to do is tighten this plate on the top if it's good. I'll move this hole over here and put it where that thing is there. So I just need to align it. Align it. Line. I'm aligned. And I'm just going to move it away from the where the spring is so it doesn't get stuck. There, tighten that up. Yeah, just throw everything on the watch, buddy. Tighten that up and everything seems to be moving, so which is good. So if I were to take a bench key, and I'm really worried about that spring though, so I take a bench key and put that in the hole. I need to pick the right size, like this. Okay, see how that moves right there? Like that so you're turning it when I let go of it I can wind the watch when I do this it it connects the ratchet up which is what I wanted I wanted the ratchet to be connected and of course I think my bench key is too small <laughs> I'm not turning anything let me see if there's a bigger bench key here yeah I think this is a bigger one yeah here we go let me try that again here not this one, it's probably this one here. Yeah, there we go. So that that pushes that out like that. And you see that moves the whole mechanism there. And then if I let go, it comes back together again. Right, so it'll pull that back into place. We'll try that again here. It's in like that, then it's It'll move the lower wheel like that. Yeah, okay. So that works. I'm going to get, get a close up and show you how that works. And then that's it for this video for today. And then I got to eat some dinner. Let me just move in really close here, Jerry. Oh my God. Newman. Hello, Newman. Hello, Jerry. Just hang on a sec. I need to do, I need to do a better Seinfeld. Thing. Newman! Hello, Jerry. There we go. That's a bit better. So look look at the way this works. I put my bench key in like that. When I press down, you see when I press that, it connects, it connects the uh, clutch right here. When I let it go, it allows this uh, wheel to move forward. And these gears here are connecting with the gear on the bottom, which is moving stuff on the other side of the watch. So... So that's all good, man. That's that's the way to do it. That is the way you do it. And I just want to do one more thing, though. Let me see. I think I'm good there. I don't need to put any grease in the other part. But you saw I put a bit of oil in the head of this thing here so I could push this up. 
the spring seems to be working well it's in the right place and I and I double check the length of the spring on this here just to make sure that you know when you're putting it together this one here is actually connecting and if I look at it in this situation here where it's open um, yeah I can see the slightest bit of curve right there which means not all of the spring is all the way in so and it seems to be working fine so so we're good that's good man it's a great little mechanism lasted all these years so that's the keyless mechanism I think I'm gonna get a book out and see if I can find anything on this there it is there and that is this for this video it's assembling the keyless works for this and I'm going to stop and I'm going to publish but I might get a book just hang on so just to be dead accurate here again so I was right here this is the clutch wheel that's the clutch and this is simply called a pinion here so clutch and pinion all right we got a little bit of an oh my god moment I found it so here it is here as you can see and these are what I was putting in place and there's that spring so that's a lever this is a what's this a shipper or something it's a shipper cam or shipper thing and that's the spring that's the cap with the hole in it and the little tiny screw but and there's the assembly of the um, of the stem so winding and stem stem setting removal would be all of this stuff here the setting assembly um, and let me see winding and this thing here figure 908 was winding arbor assembly removing so that's the plunger so when we saw that go through that little plunger was on the end and that's the one that was sticking right on the end here when I had to put that piece back in and the plunger went through there but it doesn't really show you how to reassemble the thing so even if I read it let me see what it says here tweezers invert to start the hairspring da -da -da, what are they talking about uh, they're in figure 101 they'd have to I think and I'm in, over in the world of Hamilton I think so <laughs> so it doesn't really tell you you just need to pay attention and take pictures as you disassemble it but I found it so there it is a Waltham Waltham pocket watch and it's a uh, 9 or 17 jewels so there we go that's it and those are the parts and those are the names of those little levers and stuff and that's how you reassemble it so I'll Put that in the video, Waltham Pocket Watch Winding and Setting Assembly, Setting, Assembly, Assembly. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Catch you next time. Oh, before I go, the book I found it in is the TM9-1575 War Department Technical Manual. That's what TM stands for. For Ordnance Maintenance of wristwatches, pocket watches, stopwatches, and clocks. I actually have two of these books because somebody at the office years ago said, hey, JD, you want, you want mine? And it's got a lot of stuff in here. It's actually really good. It's a good book. I think I'll, I think I'll go through and read that tonight. It even has a list of, of all of the different tools you need as a watchmaker. Oh my God. I show this list to my wife and she's okay, we're going to be poor. All kinds of tools. And, and it's not even... I'm not even showing the pages of all the lays and stuff, so tons of tools. And I think I've got every one of them. Yeah, there's some staking sets and all kinds of stuff. So if you want, I can go through the tools at some point in time uh, that, that are in this book and do a review of them. But for now, I've done my job. So that's the hardest part of this whole reassembly of this particular pocket watch is is getting the setting mechanisms back together again that's a tough job thanks a lot thanks for watching my channel love the comments throw a lot of them in there and i'll get right back to you